Hey everyone, Johnny here. You know, part of the whole point of geometry nodes is that you won't always be fiddling around with nodes and noodles and all of that kind of stuff. But eventually, you'd have a set of nodes that you would just use, that you would be able just to drag them into your scene, drop them on an object, and start working with them, adjusting everything that you would want in the modifier panel. That's kind of the whole point. You really shouldn't be adjusting settings inside the node tree, that everything is just exposed and it's kind of a black box. And for the most part, you can do this with most of the node trees that you might create. But there is one type of node that causes a slight problem when you want to do that. And that's the string to curves node. So I've got a super simple geometry node set up here. I'm bringing in a string putting it in string to curves, and then outputting it. I could even make it more complex by hooking up all of these different settings here. And if I were to go to a screen that was just my 3D viewport, and um, you know I was working with it here, if I want to change the font, I have to go back and dive into my node tree. Now, of course, this node tree, it would be very simple to jump in here and uh, to edit the font, the overflow, the justification, the um, vertical alignment, all that stuff. But what happens if you've got a node tree that has a significant amount of nodes in it? You know, you've got to search around that and find the node you're looking for, zoom into it and adjust it. And that can become a hassle. Plus, if you're distributing these to people who don't really know how to use geometry nodes, they might not know exactly where to go to make those adjustments. So it's with that in mind that I'm working on a new extension. Really, I hope that's just a stopgap until the time where we actually have uh, font sockets in geometry nodes so that we can choose a font um, in the modifier panel and pass that along to the modifier. So here's what I've come up with. So now I've enabled my extension and you can see I've got a couple of modifiers in the stack here, and this smooth modifier is what is currently selected. And um, so nothing looks different yet. But as soon as I select a modifier that has a string to curves node in it, we get this. So what this does is for the selected modifier, it will let you set all of the string to curves node in that modifier with the font, with the alignment, and the pivot point, all of those settings that you can't get from uh, the sockets. And so you can see we've got a standard font opening dialog. So I've chosen a new font. We'll set the overflow to truncate and we'll put all of these to center, middle, and uh, maybe this one's uh, top center. So if these settings are different from the first uh, string to curves node in this modifier, you'll get this load current values and that will reset all of these to the settings that are in that first node. So if I say load current values, you see it goes back to what I had before. Or I can click update modifier. And now since this matches the settings that are in the modifier, we just have this update modifier button here. And if you were to add um, additional string to curves nodes, you could um, click this and it would set the rest of them to uh, the same settings. Now here in the geometry node layout window here, there are a couple of extra uh, things that will happen um, depending on what you have here. So if I add a second string to curves node within this same node tree, you'll see here that this warns you that if you use the update modifier, that two nodes will be updated. Here, if I were to change this font and these settings, you see that this just has the update modifier because it's still seeing this as the first string to curves node in the tree. And so getting the settings from it really wouldn't change anything. But if I click this, you can see that this has uh, updated both here. So if I were to change this to say overflow, you can see I can load them back and get the old values again, or I can update and it updates both of them. Now, something else that might happen is if I say have 
another object here. And I put the same modifier on this one. Because I'm using the same geometry nodes for both, you'll see here that in the modifier title, there's a two saying that there are two users of this node tree. And because if you've got two users of the same node tree, if you make a change to that tree, then it will affect both users. So in that case here, you'll see that uh, this will tell you if there are more than one user of the node tree, it will warn you that, you know what, if you update this, you're gonna be updating two users uh, of this modifier at the same time. And you might not want to do that. So in this case, if I didn't want this to update both of them, I would want to click this to make this a single user. And now you can see that it's only warning me that there are two string to curve nodes inside and I'll only be updating this one. So I could grab another font here and then update that one. And so if I wanted to transfer data from one to another, I could simply select the one that I want as my source, say load current values, go to the other one and then update the modifier. And it will transfer over all of those settings to that modifier. Now, I'm still working on this, uh, working out a few bugs here and there, but what I am going to do is make this available to my Patreon subscribers and my channel subscribers. Uh, you'll be able to download this and try this uh, extension. What you'll do is you'll simply go to your preferences and under Get Extensions, you'll install from disk rather than installing from the extension library. Eventually, once, uh, once I flesh this all the way out, I'll probably be making this more generally available. But while I'm working on it and uh, working out the bugs, those beta versions will be available to my members and Patreon subscribers. Anyhow, thanks for watching this quick video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if it inspires you to make some uh, extensions of your own, go for it. And if you wanna try a beta copy of this, go ahead and sign up for my Patreon or click below to become a channel member, and that will be available with the source files of my other projects as well. So as always, thanks for watching. I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.